Hi, everyone. It is still January 23rd, 2020. Coronavirus. I want to pass along some information that was passed along to me by subscribers whom I really want to thank for this information. And to those who have asked me to post a video um, wanting to hear what I have to say about this, what I have to say is the same that I said when there was a fear that Ebola was going to break out in the United States and Ebola was going to become the pandemic. Uh, keep your immune system strong. I have heard from several doctors, scientists, um, who have said your first line of defense against all of these viruses is a strong immune system. I eat raw garlic. Uh, a lot of people can't tolerate it, but I highly suggest that if you can tolerate it, but maybe you just don't like to eat it, I would eat it. Now, I don't know about the coronavirus. This is a new coronavirus. It's the 2019 NCOV. Coronavirus. It's a family of viruses that includes the common cold. And the symptoms, yeah, you know, as I'm you know, reading about the coronavirus, I can't help but think about measles. Now, we all know, certainly the baby boomers and the Gen Xs, those two generations know the measles were, it was not a fatal disease. It was nothing to be alarmed about. The Brady Bunch, they had a, a show about all of the Brady Bunch kids getting the measles, and they were all very happy as they played Monopoly and didn't have to go to school. Parents would have measles parties. When one kid in the neighborhood would become infected with the measles, the other parents, their children who didn't have the measles, they would send them over to get the measles so they could all get the measles at the same time. Now, well, it's been the weaponization of measles. Have they actually weaponized measles, the actual virus? I don't think so. I think they have weaponized the language that they use to inform the public, like this one right here. They scare people about the measles. Now, the one thing about the coronavirus, it may be something that is... Uh, not this really scary virus that everybody has to freak out over as mainstream media now is showing us that those in Wuhan, the city in China, that now is quarantined. And people, you'll see in this clip that I'll show, uh, freaking out and swarming hospitals to get screened for the coronavirus and you know, emptying shelves in supermarkets. The symptoms are uh, fever. Well, let me get the actual symptoms. Where are they? Um, cough, fever, trouble breathing. The symptoms are rather... Uh, symptoms that could be related to anything, but they're saying that people who most, most have mild symptoms and recover, and they're fine, most. But others can develop pneumonia and bronchitis and or bronchitis. These are 
common illnesses that people didn't fear. So, but they can be brought about in so many different ways. But people who have symptoms like this now, they may freak out. Oh my God, I have the coronavirus. Trouble breathing? A whole lot of people have trouble breathing now. Why? Because of the saturation of electromagnetic frequencies, as well as the aerosol spraying that has saturated our air and turned it into uh, toxic, poisonous, filled with these nanoparticulates, the alumina, the barium, the strontium, lithium, etc., etc., which cause people to have trouble breathing. Cough, very much related to the aerosol spraying. And fever, they can induce with electromagnetic frequencies. So there's no way to know for sure what is going on. But you know it's an event. And this event is brought about deliberately. What people, as far as I'm concerned, what you need to be concerned about is should it be labeled a pandemic? Should more and more people get it in the United States? And it's interesting because with this particular coronavirus, Well, the CDC, this was posted on the 21st, and the CDC, it is proactively preparing for the introduction. Well, it was introduced already, so posted on the 21st, it was already introduced. Okay, Uh, they first alerted uh, clinicians on January 8, to be on the lookout for patients with respiratory symptoms and a history of travel to that city. Okay, that makes sense. But they've said now that they believe, they don't know for a fact that there's a person-to-person transmission with this coronavirus. They don't know that for a fact. They're just assuming because other people in Asia have the coronavirus and they haven't been around any animals. So this coronavirus apparently, um, well, animals get it, but they don't even know for a fact if animals, if it's transmissible from animal to human. They don't know. They're guessing, like they do with a whole lot. But people with respiratory system, when they come down with any kind of respiratory infection or illness or whatever, yeah, they'll start running to the hospital. Can hospitals just diagnose them with the coronavirus when they don't actually have it? Yeah, just like hospitals uh, claim that people die of the flu when they're not dying of the flu. They have other conditions that cause complications or they die of pneumonia. They don't die of the flu, but they mark it down as died of the flu. So the CDC can say 40,000 people have died of the flu. Get your vaccine so you don't die. Yes, there's a lot of lying, a lot of manipulation, a lot of spinning the stats. But here, developing guidance for clinicians for testing and management, developing a diagnostic test to detect this virus in clinical specimens. So 
that was only two days ago. They're still developing all of this, which I find very interesting considering what another subscriber sent to me, which I'll show you in a second, but listen to Nora report on this coronavirus. I find it very interesting that yesterday six people had died. Only six. Now it's 25. So in a 24-hour period, the number of deaths have tripled? Okay, that sounds a little odd. So, yes, mainstream media will hype and exaggerate and dramatize every event as they are doing with this. The CDC is sounding the alarm and issuing its most urgent travel warning to stop the spread right here. But there are now two more possible cases in the U.S., one in Los Angeles, another in Texas. Now, that's in addition to a confirmed case in Everett, Washington. The death toll is up to 18, with more than 600 people infected. Carter Evans has the very latest. Today, a Texas A&M student showing possible coronavirus symptoms put the College Station community on edge. If there's a confirmed case, uh, contact tracing will begin, uh, and all contacts will be monitored for development of symptoms. In Wuhan, China, where the virus first emerged, police barricaded roads, blocked access to trains, and patrolled the airport as the city shut down in an effort to contain the virus. Inside hospitals, people are scrambling for screenings, and at supermarkets, worried residents cleared shelves. The streets of this typically vibrant community are now a ghost town. Chinese authorities are ordering similar shutdowns in the nearby cities of Wanggong and Urzhou, affecting nearly 20 million people. That's more than the populations of New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago combined. China's capital, Beijing, canceled major events around the Lunar New Year holiday indefinitely as the virus spreads to eight countries, sickening more than 600. Just south of Boston, Moderna Therapeutics has ramped up its research to create a vaccine specific to the new virus. The company is partnering with the National Institutes of Health, which says the vaccine could be ready for human testing in as few as three months. There are certainly unknowns. There are certainly risks with moving quickly in a vaccine. But if we don't move now, uh, there's a chance that if things spiral out of control, we won't be able to respond fast enough. And Carter joins us now from Los Angeles International Airport, which is one of five screening checkpoints in the United States for passengers arriving from China. So, Carter, have there been any positive cases there at LAX? Well, there was a big scare last night when a sick passenger arrived on a flight from Mexico. But the health department here says it's monitoring and testing a few individuals. Still, so far, no positive cases of the coronavirus. All right, Carter. All right, Carter. Good report. How do you screen for a virus that causes symptoms that could be related to a whole lot of illnesses, diseases, um, viruses. And how do you screen for a virus that, well, according to the CDC, they are the only ones who can test for it? So do they have CDC officials at the airport testing? Should somebody come in? and have those symptoms. All right, I, I, look, everything, all events are staged. Now, I find it really interesting that the CDC is still in development stages with all of this when, yeah, thank you to my subscriber who sent this along, Event 201, Pandemic Exercise. In October 2019, the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, had an exercise the exercise illustrated the pandemic